In this video, we review Azure DevOps repos. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Reldos. If you're working with a team of developers or if you're a one-person shop managing scripts, having a reliable code repository is important for versioning and management of the code you write. In this video, we go over Azure repositories or repos as they're often called. Before that, please like, subscribe, share with a friend, and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, consider becoming a member for early access to videos. Your support is appreciated. Also, check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop and Hybrid Identities with Azure AD. The links are below. Back to it. A repo in Azure DevOps is a set of versioning control tools used to manage code. Code can be any text file, application development, web pages, or scripts, for example, are all text files during development. If you have a background in programming or application development, you probably understand the importance of version control systems. I don't have a background in development and in the past kept my scripts on a file share or USB drive. I would copy and paste to make new versions. This does not scale well and doesn't work well at all when we're sharing code in a group. If you're like me and coming into DevOps without a lot of dev experience, Version control for scripts may seem like an overkill, but trust me, it's extremely valuable when writing, organizing, updating, and sharing code. Take some time with it and you'll be happy you did. To get started, let's review the options for repos in Azure DevOps. There are two types of repos available with Azure DevOps. First is Team Foundation Version Control, or TFVC. This is a centralized version control system. Changes are tracked in a database on a central server. There's only one version of each file. Team Foundation Version Control has fallen out of favor for Git. We'll talk about that next. It may still be in use in some organizations, but the industry is moving away from centralized code repositories, such as Team Foundation Version Control. I'm not going to spend any more time on Team Foundation Version Control for this video. Now let's talk about Git. Git is a free and open source code management and version control system. It's decentralized, meaning it does not rely on a central server like Team Foundation Version Control. Git uses a lightweight client to enable version controls on the file system. Although it's decentralized, we can still store and manage versions in a central location, such as DevOps Git repos. Also, Git is not the same as GitHub or GitLab. Those are code management systems that use Git just like Git repos in Azure DevOps. There are other commercial and open source code management systems that leverage Git. They all have their own benefits and value adds in addition to using Git for source code management, but they are not the same as Git, the open source code management system. The examples coming up will be with Git. By the way, if you're getting started, I have a blog series intended for those new to Git, especially coming from the operation side of DevOps. The series goes over setting up Git on a local computer and creating a local repo and versioning. Then it moves on to Git with VS Code. The link is below if you'd like to take a look. One last thing before we move on to the demos. Microsoft purchased GitHub a couple years ago. That may give you an indication of Microsoft's commitment to Git. That has also led some speculation on the future of Azure DevOps. Microsoft has stated there is no plan to get rid of or depreciate Azure DevOps. It's going to be around for a while. Let's move on to the demo. Here we are in the Azure DevOps portal. Let's create a new project. We have the option for a name, description, if it's public or private. And if we go to advanced, we have the option for Git or Teams Foundation Version Control. Let's give it a name and leave it as Git to create a new Git project. We'll call it Git Test. It looks like I missed the T at the end of test. Too late to re-record this, so please overlook that mistake. From the new project, we can go to repos. That's the icon with the three dots and the lines running between them. We have an empty repo. We can clone this to our local computer. Cloning creates a local copy. Git is decentralized, so we don't typically work from the portal or server. We copy it to the local computer and work on it there. However, for this example, we'll use the integrated editor. It gives us the option for cloning by HTTPS or SSH, and we can clone directly to VS Code. This option works very well if you have a local copy of VS Code. The Git agent also has to be installed on the local computer. 
Take a look at my blog post on setting that up. VS Code doesn't work with Git until the agent is installed on the local computer. By the way, cloning a repository is exactly what you may think. It creates a local copy of the repo, including all the history, the commits, and branches. Our repo is empty. We don't have any files in the repo. It hasn't been initialized. Let's add the readme file to initialize the repo. We can do that at the bottom of the page. We simply click Initialize. That brings us to the repo. We're in our main branch at this point. Now, I've put out other content on using Git, specifically for lone scripters or teams of one, where everything is done in the main branch. Although fine for teams of one, it's bad form to edit in main. Think of main as your production branch of code. We don't want to make changes directly to production. Instead, we'll create a new branch and work on that and pull it into the main branch when it's ready. Go to the drop down next to main and select new branch. This one will be called dev. Notice we also have the option to link it to work items from the board. Click create. And now we're in the new dev branch. Let's add a file, go to new file and create a file. This example, we'll use the name code.txt. We'll click create. We're just creating a simple text file for this example. That works well enough to go over the basics of Git repos in Azure DevOps. Let's add some text. Remember, most code is just a series of text files. We're kind of replicating that with a simple text file. I'll add hello world. Once it looks good, we can commit the branch. That commits the changes to the repository. It asks for a comment. Get into the habit of using good comments. This will help you or others using your code understand what changes were made and why they were made. Once you've added your comments, click Commit. Now let's say we need to edit this file. We can go to Edit, and then we'll update the file and commit it again. Now we'll commit. And once we've added our comments, we'll click Commit. That's enough to keep us going. We're not actually writing code for this example. Let's look at the history of the file. We can see the comments with each commit, as well as who made the changes. Let's go to Compare. It shows the previous version compared to the current commit we're viewing, also called Head. Let's look at Blame. That shows the updates made along with the author. Let's go back to content. We modified the dev branch. Let's take a quick look at main. We'll switch to the main branch. We get a file not found error because the file is not in main. We're only modifying dev. Let's change back to dev and go to commits. Here are all the commits again. It starts with where we initialized the repo with the readme file and created then updated code.txt. Let's go to push. The push happens when we commit because we're working on the server. If we were working on a remote clone of the branch, we would have to push the local changes to the server with a push command. Let's go to branches. Here we can see the main branch and the dev branch. We don't have tag set up, let's go to pull requests. Push and pull can be confusing if you're getting started with Git. For example, if I make a local copy of a branch and make changes, I can then push those changes to the same branch to update the online version, keeping the local and the remote version of the branch in sync. But I may want to update the parent branch, main for this example, with changes from the dev branch. In this case, I want to request a pull of the dev branch to main. This process usually requires a code review and testing. A pull request usually starts that process. Let's go to new pull request. Give it a title, add code.txt for this example. 
give it a description, update dev with a new code file for this example. We can select a reviewer. I'll add myself. We also have the option to link this to a work item and add tags. We can create or create it as a draft. Let's click create. Let's exit and go back into pull requests. This just changes the view to what a reviewer would see. Let's open it up. Here we can see files. We can add a comment to the file if we want to point something out. Let's go to updates. Those are the changes in the commits we've made on the file. And then go to commits. And there are our commits. Let's go back to overview. As an approver, I've got a few options. I can approve, approve with a suggestion, wait for the author, or reject. Let's go to approve. Now that it's approved, we have a couple more options. We can complete it, we can mark it as a draft or abandon it. Let's complete. The merge type merge will add the history of our commits to the main branch. If we had associated work items, the merge would complete them automatically. Delete dev after merging. This will remove the dev branch after it's merged to main. We may want to keep this one going so all of our changes are done in dev, then merge back to main when we're ready. Let's keep the check mark cleared on that. We can also customize a commit message. Let's click complete merge. That's done, let's go back to our files. Now we still have our dev branch with the file we created. Let's switch to the main branch. Now the main branch has the file as well. If we look at history, it shows all the commits, including those from the dev branch. So it's preserving that history. We could create another branch. Let's call this one test. It could be based on main or dev. Let's leave it set to main and create. Let's go to our branches. Now it shows test as well as dev and main. Test is an independent branch now. Any changes to test won't be updated in dev until we synchronize the branches with main. As you can probably imagine by now, branching can get complicated if we have multiple branches all updating at different times. Having a branching strategy in place will add some governance around what branches are created and how they're managed. Speaking of that, let's review the repository settings. Go to the project settings, the gear icon in the bottom left. Go to repositories. Here we can go to settings and modify if users can manage permissions for their own branches. There are several settings under policies to configure for the repo. We can also set permissions on the repo under security. Let's go back to repositories. Let's go into our repository and policies and select the main branch. Here we have several settings to safeguard the main branch. For example, we can require a minimum number of reviewers. Within repos and project settings, we can add safety rails around specific branches that provide some oversight on what changes are made to the main or other branches. That is an overview of repos in Azure DevOps. I hope this helps you better understand Azure DevOps repos. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.